Well, it is a year since Boris Johnson said he would resign as Prime Minister. How much more evidence does there have to be before Conservatives realise that they've been absolutely had and that getting rid of Boris Johnson is hurtling them towards electoral oblivion? It is staggering to see how Sunak's Tories have fallen. It has become the perceived wisdom that the Tories were getting slaughtered in the polls when Boris was ousted, but that simply isn't true. They were about 7.7 .7 points behind. Now they're consistently around 20 points behind. Things are now nearly three times as bad as they were when Boris Johnson was in power. Eleven days after Boris left, Angela Rayner admitted that Boris was Labour's biggest electoral threat. Shock horror. That is why the kangaroo court wanted him out as well, which they got. And that is why there is now a push to oust Boris allies like Jacob Rees-Mogg, Priti Patel and Nadine Dorries. The Lib Dems have now laid an amendment calling for those named MPs to be referred to the Committee of Privileges to consider whether their conduct amounted to contempt of the House and then look to ban them. They could then face, of course, by-elections. The Tories had an 80-seat majority. They now have a majority of 55 with Chris Pincher. If they lose another two MPs in Dorries and Pincher, plus a potential seven because of the Privileges Committee special report, that would take the Tory majority down to 38. It's remarkable, isn't it? The lefty House of Lords know that Sunak's only chance of winning the next election is if he can sort out illegal immigration. So what are they doing? Dithering, delaying, knocking it back and forth like ping pong, dragging it out so it wouldn't be implemented, if it is at all, before the next general election. And indeed, if it is, and it certainly won't have had any impact by then, will it? For anyone who really thinks that all of this talk of morality, integrity in politics, being virtuous, honesty, has ironically got any shred of honesty about it, well, I do have news for you. You have been completely and utterly had, totally turned over. It was never about that. It was always only ever about getting the Tories out of power, about getting rid of their key electoral assets. It is a very British coup. And it should not be surprising that the other parties, the Lords and the media, tried it on. That's what they do. They're well within their rights to do that. I am, however, very surprised that the Conservatives and their public school and Oxbridge-educated boffins walked into it so easily.